Hello! Long time no see and I can only apologise for that. I've been rather busy. But I'm going to bring you a tech review of this book. A bit backwards but it's the Raspberry Pi, one of my favourite topics. Um, before we begin though, this book was provided free by the Amazon Vine customer review programme. Um, if you're watching this video on Amazon then this is the kind of thing that I'm going to review for you. If you're watching it on YouTube, I review these things for Amazon. It's as simple as that. Um, I always give my true and, and honest opinion to help you guys out. So what about this book? Well, it represents the best and the worst of the Raspberry Pi publication sort of syndication that's going off at the moment. This explosion of popularity of, of the single board computer phenomenon. Um, the reason it represents the best is it looks fantastic, it reads really well, there's lovely pictures to explain all the ideas and the concepts and the projects within. It's well laid out, uh, where there are instructions they are clear to read, and you know it catches the eye. It, it's, it's well put together, it's robust enough to deal with kids in a classroom um, as well as just a casual reader, and it's clear enough for anybody with a jobbing knowledge to, to get on with. So what's bad about it? What can I complain about? Well, it's almost like the snake oil salesman because this talks about builds. Yeah, build your gadgets, build these ideas. But it doesn't really give you that. So there are several dozen projects in here. Okay, it goes and shows you all these items, all these things. Now, these are Pi projects, you think I can build all these things? Wow, this is great! No, you can actually only build certain select ones. The very basic ones are shown. So, a, a robot in a box with wheels, these things. Now, the cool stuff like a tank or binocular pie, um, or the my you know, the uh, the cluster computer, you can't build them. These, they're just ideas, they're just pictures of other people's projects. So here's the pocket cluster computer. Okay, so it's a lovely picture, you know, it's all laid out lovely. Um, there's, there's a rough idea of what the price of this is and the parts required. You think, oh, materials used, six Raspberry Pi, six SD cards, six Ethernet cables. Oh, this is going to show me how to build a parallel, you know, cluster computer. And, and then, you know, you, you, you read through and, oh, wow, this is, you know, the code, you, the code, building your own pocket, pocket cluster is a code and software intensive project. You'll certainly need to use Python. Getting to grips with Scala might be useful. There's a little bit of Java to learn, and you'll likely have to familiarize yourself with the MapReduce programming model as well. Oh, it's going to teach me all that, is this? It's going to be really great. All right, next page, more lovely pictures of it. Okay, okay. Oh, the creator got on with this, did he? All tips. There's tips on how to do it all. Where's the instructions? This will be great. And no, it's on to the next item. That's the snake oil salesman in action. There is two pages there about cluster. It doesn't tell you about Beowulf or clustering or load balancing. It doesn't give you any of the Python or the Scala or any of the other information it tells you to look up. It talks about Sung Taek, which I may be pronouncing badly, uh, began to consider how the Pi 2 might be used to be help his research and throw together a test. Good for him. How do I do that? This is just an idea. There's absolutely no guts in this. This is this is just a figment of, you know, poof, it's gone. So let's look at a project that they do actually show you what to do and how to do it. Um, that will be robust Minecraft server. So we'll pick something that's server orientated. And it starts off with this lovely thing and you need a keyboard and this fantastic case and it, it, it will look like this for you. But you're just buying that case. You're not building it yourself. It's not showing you how to how to laser cut that case or get it. You just order it. So, okay. Well, I could have learned that without buying this book. So is it going to teach me much or is it going to be fantastic pictures? No, the pictures are actually like that. They are black and white, very simple schematics. And the bold text that you see here is pretty much the um, the instructions. These are the the wget and the, and the the which Java commands to run. Um, you know how, what sudo app get updates or sudo app get installs to use. Um, 
it's not it's not that useful you know it's not you know i want to run my stuff and how to go headless well run screen but you don't need to run screen why are you obsessed with screen if you're running headless does it matter it's not a desktop computer it's a part are you going to leave it in the corner it's dedicated to this job you know why are you why are you spending the first quarter of the page talking about screen the second quarter about going headless i mean this is the actual this is the actual build so ignore this page straight away half of it is not about setting up a minecraft server it's not about you know doing anything else and then it does this horrible, horrible cardinal sin of using Raspberry Pi dot local. Really? Well, I'm pretty sure that your Raspberry Pi might be on DHCP and might just about get an IP address. Why not teach the person how to go IF config and show the IP address of the server? And then, you know, talk about they need to go to their router and their network and make that a static IP so that it never changes. Not just look it up by name and hope it works on your machine, because nine times out of ten, that isn't going to work. Certainly not in the UK. I know that Virgin Media's uh, routers are not going to look that up by name. Uh, I know that Talk Talks aren't. I know that some O2 stuff aren't. I know Netgear stuff isn't. I know Linksys stuff isn't. Pretty useless. Pretty flawed, actually. So what can I pick out that's good about this? See, that, that's where I hate the book because you want to then go and look at what's good. Well, I quite like the jargon buster section. I quite like it. It's quite simple. Quite what Lego has to do with anything. Don't know. It's just a random picture of Lego. Okay, it says, The Internet of Lego on pages 184 and 195 provides a small, stale demonstration of the Internet of Things. Right, well, it actually doesn't. If I just go to 184, okay. So, again, more pictures of Lego. Well, Lego is not, but again, it's Lego registered copyright, Lego, yeah. It's just a list of things, yeah, okay. And here's the cardinal sin. The first thing, two Raspberry Pis. The next thing, a Beagle Bone. The next two, an Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, and two Arduino Nanos. This is about Raspberry Pi. What? Why are you suddenly talking about this? And then, and then, approximate cost to build seventeen hundred pounds, mostly on the Lego. What? what are you talking about? You were talking about Internet of Things. Well, the Internet of Things is not the Lego Internet of Things. What is? It's disjointed. You think, well, what's this about? It's actually about them building a model Lego kit that's controlled by a Raspberry Pi and a whole bunch of other single board computers. Well, that's a great, yeah. You, so a whole section of stuff is going to be talking about how to put this together no there's just more pictures of it here's the arduinos embedded in some lego you know they're they're turning they're turning the lights on broadway made out of lego really it, i mean it looks fantastic though that's a great shot to give someone in a book but it's not teaching them how to use it um and, and it, there are topic after topic like this to so the lego thing completely misrepresented right from the get-go you think well, internet of things well, that means you know shutting the curtains from my smartphone or getting my smart energy meter and that's internet of things that's the things on the internet that's you know embedding micro devices in something well the raspberry pi could be but control a bunch of these things it, it, no it's they're not doing that they're not showing you that and they're just showing pretty pictures when they are you know the media center build it's just pretty pictures um, the 3D body scanner. Well, that looks really, really cool. You know, he's going to scan his body with all these vertical, you know, pie placed cameras. It's not going to show you how to make it though. Again, a hundred Raspberry Pis and a hundred Raspberry Pi cameras. It's a cool thing, you know, but it's just a picture. You know, this promises on the front page builds, and they do. It does not deliver them. 
And then the final thing that really annoys me, really annoys me, is the foreword, okay, by David Braben. Now, I love Elite. If you don't know what Elite is, 1980s computer game written by David Braben and uh, Thingy Bell, forget his first name, um, because he's no longer part of the industry. Um, but David stuck on and he created Frontier Developments and, you know, he's been made an OBE and he's a fellow of the uh, Royal Society of Engineers, I believe, or FRENG. And he's a member of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And I think it's great that he was involved and he used his name and did that. And I love Elite. But he's here gabbling on about there being a lack of um, suitable, trained, enthusiastic um, graduates for computing in around 2003. I noticed a sharp decrease in the number of graduate applicants to Frontier Developments PLC. Really? Because Frontier Developments PLC wasn't doing very much. You weren't making very much. It's, it's after that you made the Cuddly Animals thing on the Xbox and after that still that you've come out now recently two years ago with you know Elite um, so uh, uh, the most recent version of Elite from you know not Frontier but it just annoys me it's like you're going on about this you know ICT is not a degree so you talk about there being a lack of graduates right and you say there's a lack of graduates because they were doing ICT at GCSE you're missing out A-level computing in the middle there. You're missing out all sorts of stuff that people like me did. And and what happened at 2003 is th there was a lack of graduates because the dot-com bubble had burst. No one was going to get jobs in IT. Suckers like me that had trained four or five years before the dot-com bubble burst, we all ended up graduating then and finding a dearth of jobs and not getting very much done. You know, only now is you know the world recovering, but they want young new kids, not old fellas like me. So I don't know where this gets off, really, going on about stuff. And you know, spinning forward to his next bit, he talks about you know they're running an LED blinking and running a program on the International Space Station. Yeah, but that really nothing to do with you. It's really annoying. It's really annoying and condescending, and I hate it. I hate this forward. I hate it. Um, now. The book itself, I say it was presented good um, and presented well, but there are two authors. And I think that the two authors were somebody putting together what would be a great, a great uh, picture book of things done with the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. But that isn't quite enough for the book. You know, so these pictures of Internet radio and you know, an Internet monitor and all these fancy things in fancy cases. It's great. But the other person was clearly brought on board to give you the little build it ones. But they are so simplistic. The build it items are just so. I mean, this is the hundred camera scanners, and directly above it is stick your Raspberry Pi in a lunchbox. Really, hundred cameras, Raspberry Pi in a lunchbox. Okay, is it an eighteen lunchbox? Have we ruined an eighteen lunchbox? This really annoys me. You know, a yogurt maker. Yay, grow mold in a box with a with a pie. Moldy pie. Mm. And then the other items, so simplistic, build yourself a case with Lego Technics. Do you know how much a Lego Technics case costs? Let me tell you now, a lot of uh, Lego Technics costs a lot. I'd rather buy a Duplo block, hollow it out and glue it in and pay for Lego Technics to turn into a Raspberry Pi box. It's just silly. It's just silly. Um, and, and I think it could be, this book could be much, much more entertaining if it just owned up and went, we've got, what's it, four on this page and four on that page. So eight. There are eight things you can buy and then they've got pictures of stuff other people have made that are far more entertaining and far more useful. And I just think it's a pain. It's really well printed. It has so much potential. It's clearly drawn in David Braben to give his moniker of info and, and unrelated stuff to this thing. But this is never going to make you want to study IT. Those eight projects are never going to kick you off in the direction of anywhere near any of the others. The others are so far beyond the eight examples. It's untrue. There is very little programming. 
very little ideas in here that get you going. And as such, I'm not going to mark this very highly. I'm in fact going to mark it as a two, probably, because I don't like it. I don't think this is good enough for people. I don't think this is good enough for it to be an official Raspberry Pi co-founder four-worded book. It is both the best in that it is really well presented and really well laid out and has very pretty pictures, but it is the worst in that it does not have any content of any value whatsoever. And that's where I stand. Don't like it. Bye-bye.